This Friday, October 10, will be recognized as the International Day Against the Death Penalty. A public forum was held yesterday, and we have with us three specially invited guests for that event. Renny Cushing, who is State Representative for New Hampshire, Leela Ramden, Chair of the Greater Caribbean for Life, and Juan Roberto Melendez, former death row inmate. Good morning to all of you and Good welcome morning, to morning. Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. Lila, I'm going to start with you yes. because it's a Caribbean yes. initiative. Why the focus on the Caribbean? Well, last year, the World Coalition Against the Death Penalty focused on the Caribbean. So the whole world focused on the Caribbean. But why? Uh, because we are... You know, every year since 2007, not every year, 2007, there have been four opportunities at the UN for countries to sign on to the moratorium. The UN has asked countries, even if you want to keep the death penalty on your criminal code, at least sign a moratorium. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing that the Caribbean since 2008 has been our last hanging, knowing the effects of Pratt and Morgan and all the subsequent cases, that the Privy Council will always find some reason to say, this is not the worst of the worst case, and so you can't hang. Mm -hmm. We still hold on to that penalty rather than looking at alternatives, looking at other ways to prevent crime. Mm -hmm. So it's become a political issue that, that, we, that our politicians will not look at alternatives, will not look at what the UNDP have said in their 2012 Caribbean report on human development, that we need to have a better balance between legitimate law enforcement and preventive measures, with a focus on preventive measures. How do we develop our youth? Are we looking at poverty and social exclusion, etc.? And so a group of us, we, we were inaugurated last year in, after a conference in Trinidad and Tobago um, where the, the Amnesty International, the whole world, it seems, came um, to Trinidad for this conference. And I was elected chair. And we have quite a wide range of views. It's a non-sectarian um, civil society organization. And we have members in, in 12 of our countries. Now, when you think of it, the 10 English, 25 countries in the Greater Caribbean Basin the 10 English-speaking ones are the ones that really hold a quarter of the votes of the moratorium. Uh -huh. And we're the ones that really retain the death penalty. Sorry, 13. 10 of the other the countries in the region are abolitionists. Right. Um, and the retentionist ones are the 13 Caribbean ones. And two of us, Trinidad and Tobago, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados still retain the mandatory debt penalty. Mm. And so we have to look at ways 140 countries around the world have abolished the debt penalty. Now, for us in the Caribbean, quite often people will say, hang them high. But all the research is showing that it's not the way to go, that that just detracts from people looking at um, ways of... The, the real, and the real, the real the issues root behind it. Juan, I want to bring you yes. in right here because you're a former, you're a former inmate. What is your take on it? Convince me. Um, as a government, that, that this is not the right way to go, having experienced this well, yourself. <clears throat> you take, uh, like in my case, uh, you take it in the United States, they got 146. I'm the number 99 in the nation. Uh, an innocent man, alone stays this great country, this great island Jamaica have, an innocent man can be ex ex executed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always release an innocent man from prison. We never had no problems with that. Mm. But we can never. And I repeat, we can never release an innocent man from the grave. Mm. That's one of the reasons we should get, get, rid, get rid of it. Another reason we should get rid of it is it don't deter crime. It don't resolve. These people that, that gonna commit this crime, they're not thinking about getting caught anyway. Mm -hmm. So it don't deter crime. Another reason, it costs too much. It costs more, more than the, 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 the person. process and the appeals yeah. process. But for you sitting there, um, and knowing that you are innocent, mm -hmm. um, just how difficult was that for you to know I'm this close to, to, to death for something that I didn't do? It was, it was very difficult. And but 17 years. 17 years, eight months and one day. It was very difficult. But I'll tell you the truth. In the end, I was, I was even ready for it. Yeah. Because I'm tired of being in that cell. This is torture. Yeah. But more, more but what I was worrying about more was my family. How my family going to feel? when they, they secure me. How the people that wrote me so many letters that, that, that was, uh, was beside me all the time, let me know that I'm not alone in this problem. How are they gonna feel if I get a security? That was what's worrying me more than anything. 
Yeah. Renny, you're here as a part of this initiative. Um, why, why is the state representative so interested in how we view the death penalty here in the region? Well, I'm interested in the issue of the death penalty because my father was murdered and my brother-in-law were murdered. So when I think about what you do after someone's been killed, it's not intellectual, it's part of my life. Okay. And I'm one of a group of people who've had the unspeakable a painful experience of having a loved one killed and we've come to conclude that a ritual killing by a public employee of the person who killed our loved one doesn't bring anybody back it doesn't make us safer and um, we're opposed to the death penalty we do but I also bring this message because I want us to focus on meeting the needs of victims of mm -hmm. crime they often get forgotten on this so I I oppose the death penalty because I think it's a uh, it's not, a, it's not a criminal justice sanction, but it's a human rights violation. And as somebody who's had the experience of burying somebody who's been taken by homicide, I don't want any other families to do that. Mm. Um, so, and you know, I'm here in solidarity. I come from a retentionist country where we're wrestling with the death penalty. Yes. We know that this is a global movement and what happens in one nation impacts and inspires others. And so I, I, I'm here, I realize how important Jamaica is in this region. Mm -hmm. Right now, the, you know, in many ways, the eyes of the world are looking at the, the Caribbean for some leadership on this. And in particular, mm -hmm. where you come from a legacy of, you know, of oppression, of, uh, of violence, Slavery. you know. This is, yeah, this is, country grew out of the Middle Passage. Um, slavery was, you know, the death penalty was an instrument that maintained control over people. And it's a tribute to those who have suffered in the past that we try to build a better future and the world can live without the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Lila, one would say it, it's, in the region, we haven't really um, done anything in terms of putting anyone to death. It, it's sitting there. Yes. Um, people sit on, on death row, yes. but that we haven't really well, they gone can't the full. Yes, because <laughs> as I said, the I mean, the, the, we must remember Suriname is changing their code. They're going, they're two, uh, uh, Grenada and Suriname were the ones that are not practicing, they're abolitionists in, in, um, in practice because they haven't um, had death penalty for a long time. The last yeah. death hanging here was 2018 in Kitts and Charles Laplace. Now, one of the problems we have is that we've had a number of cases. We've had not only Pratt and Morgan in 93, but we've had, um, for instance, in 96, Guerra and Baptiste, where the Privy Council said, five years, no, four years, 10 months, too long. Then in 97, Henville and AG of Bahamas, they said three and a half years is, is an uh, inappropriate delay. In 2009, there was a case, Trimingham and the Queen in St. Vincent and Grenadines, where the Privy Council laid out two key principles. Mm. It says, if you want the death penalty, you have to meet these principles. First, it must be the rarest of the rare, worst of the worst, exceptional case. And secondly, you must be able, there must be no reasonable prospect of reform of the offender, and the object of punishment could not be achieved by any other means than the ultimate sentence of death. And after that, in 2011, we had another case, Ernest Lockhart, another Bahamian case, where in fact the Privy Council said, no, 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 even if you think it's the worst of the worst, there must be two, they added two other further bits of guidance. You may need a clinical sci, um, a consultant psychiatrist and at the end Lord, Lord Kersey and also perhaps a clinical um, psychologist. So each time there's a case when you think it's the worst of the worst, the Privy Council, because we know in Europe only, the, only Belarus has the death penalty. Every other country doesn't. doesn't so they, the Privy Council is not, as long as we retain the Privy Council in our region or English speaking countries, as a final court of appeal, not to say that the Caribbean Court of Justice will be a hanging court, but as long as we retain that, as Sashwida Tranfil says, you're loitering on the doorsteps of colonialism. As long as we remain there, they will call the shots and they will tell us because they don't want the death penalty. So why, why keep it? And why have not even signed the moratorium, even to keep it? Sign the moratorium. Another session is coming up in December. And I'm hoping that our Caribbean uh, leaders will be what we need are courageous leaders. This is not addressing <coughs> poverty and social exclusion. You know, I'm an attorney in Trinidad. I've gone back after 35 years in England. And I'm amazed that we're not addressing the root causes of crime. The little black fellas in our, our prisons are not bringing in the drugs and the guns. 
the big boys are never caught. You don't see them in the prisons. Mm. So it's time for us to look at, at what at the, the root, root causes, causes are. are. We have to go. We could talk <laughs> about this all morning. This um, what's going to be happening? I know that happened yesterday. Yes. Is there something else that's going to be happening this week that we can be a part yeah. of? Well, we, we leave tomorrow. Oh, yeah, but leave today, tomorrow. today we have um, other events all day. We have uh, opportunities to meet with the press. We have a press conference later this morning as awesome. well. Yes. Awesome. But the link it will be advertised of the, it will, the proceedings will take Yes. Uh, so people so be able to go to, on. And, yeah. and, and, well, I'll and encourage the public to, yes. to go on. We had school and, children and yes, see and read very what good. it's about and yes. see if they can also add their voice yes. because right. it affects us all. Yes. Oh, it was a pleasure to meet you and thank you yes. so thank you very much. She is so for brave. being with us this morning. <laughs> State Representative for New Hampshire, Rennie Cushing, and the Chair of Greater Caribbean for Life, Leela Ramden, and former death row inmate, Juan Roberto Melendez.